What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going to Georgia Institute of Technology and talking with a PhD student there. It's one of the best engineering schools in the nation. He's going to be showing us a little bit about his work area and what his job is all about, what he's studying. It's a very interesting experience to just, you know, check out the campus and just see how it feels like to be a PhD student. So it's going to be amazing. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video and let us know in the comments what kind of videos like this you want to see in the future. But uh, without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, what's up everyone? We are here at Georgia Tech campus with PhD student Awesome Ghazi. So um, he's uh, doing a PhD in electric engineering and also minoring in biomedical. Exactly. All right, so that's that's really cool. This is his work area where he studies and works. Do you want to take us on a little tour to show us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> cool. Yeah, so this is this is kind of my desk. Um, I'm more on the computational side of things. So a lot of times my advisor, Omar Inan, actually, um, he's an expert in biomedical sensing systems and modulation systems. So what that means is trying to measure things from the body and possibly change those things to improve health. And so the whole point of that um, is so that we can do not only, we can not only improve the health of low income kind of areas where they might not have access immediately to like a medical hospital, um, but also even when it comes to kind of discharging patients from the medical hospital, a lot of times you need a monitor, right? So you need to monitor their health and that's where all these wearable ubiquitous health system, digital health is another kind of hot term right now, especially during and during and after kind of, it'll, it'll, go, it'll continue. I think COVID really brought it to the forefront, um, kind of monitoring health at home. So I'm more on the computational side. I think of the ways that you can take signals and actually extract relevant information and do things with those signals. So you'll see, I don't have very much hardware. I have a little bit of hardware kind of here, sitting around, but this is just an Arduino and a little breadboard. Um, but a lot of my work happens on, on, my, uh, on my whiteboard, doing a lot of math, planning, drawing out things, and then on my good old computer, and then my workstation at home um, that does more of the heavy duty stuff. Um, but what you kind of see on the wall here, research posters. So a lot of times, one of the most important parts of research, you can be the coolest person in the world discovering everything, right? Discovering this, that, and the other. But if you can't tell the world about what you've discovered, then it's immaterial, right? No one will ever know about it. So research posters is one way of communicating that. Um, the most effective way is a research paper because this research paper lives on even after you're dead. Sometimes I read research papers of people who are dead. Right? So they're constantly teaching me even afterwards because writing is like immortal, right? That's the only, that's one of the only forms of communication that's immortal other than a video. Um, so that's also immortal. So yeah, I can show you kind of around some of the other spaces we have here, uh, sort of like a high powered sort of workstation um, that kind of does some of the machine learning that we do. Um, we run stuff there. We have some desktops kind of hidden under here, um, kind of, littered around the uh the workspace um but yeah any of those big desktops we kind of run more heavier um, computation on mm -hmm. and and yeah you can see kind of on this floor there's more computational sort of aspects um so you'll see more monitors and stuff like that so we can actually kind of visualize the data and such um but yeah this is kind of like a classical workspace so sometimes i think what people get uh surprised with is you know, oh, I thought like a research lab, like you have goggles and like, you know, like you're wearing a gown or whatever the thing is called, right? And, uh, and you're in there and like, you know, no. I mean, um, a lot of times in, in engineering research, it looks just like an office space because uh, we're really kind of working, um, working towards discovering something new and something big. And, and uh, yeah, writing code doesn't require gloves, so. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. So just, just earlier you were uh, talking about uh, one of the most important parts of your research is having to, you know, write it down, being able to not just do all the engineering aspects, but actually writing everything down. So um, if you've seen my other IB videos uh, or even another interview with Mr. Sklar, um, I'll, I'll link that below. But basically, he was also talking about how because because he's a humanities teacher. So he talks about how it's not only important to be, you know, doing STEM and everything, but English and 
your speaking skills is really important, right? And then uh, also if you're an IB, another thing to take away is, you know, how we write those internal assessments and extended essays and all that kind of stuff. It, it really helps you prepare for this higher level education, like he's telling from experience. And if you have any other thing to add, you can just let us know. Yeah, no, I, I could not agree more. I think you, you articulated that very well. Um, and I think that's usually what differentiates the good PhD student from the excellent PhD student. I think to be a good PhD student, in, at least in engineering, you have to be a good engineer, right? right. You're not even gonna make, that's like the minimum, that's like the prerequisite. But once you're a good engineer, at some point, you have to be able to communicate the findings and yeah, absolutely, writing research papers, but not only writing, right? Um, oral communication is very important. Going to a conference, actually being able to, to convince experts in the field that you did something really substantial so then they go read your paper and learn more about it. Um, so oral communication is also another kind of downplayed aspect of research, but you'll see a lot of top researchers, they show up on you know, news shows and stuff like that and what? They're able, to, they're able to articulate the research and talk about why it's important. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, thank you. All right, thanks so much for watching guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to smash that like button and also subscribe if you wanna see more content around SAT, college readiness, and the IB program. And we also have another interview uh, coming up with him. It's a much longer video where we just talked a lot about the college process and everything. While this video focused on his experience at Georgia Tech, this next video is gonna be some probably something that you guys can take away and apply to your own applications and stuff like that. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. And yeah, just like that, this video is about to be done. I'm out in three, two, one.